Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Riverside Live Online Church. Great to see you all this morning. We uh, um, Don't forget to say hello if you're online. We'd love to see you. If it's your first time watching us this morning, a very warm welcome to you. Um, and just remember to share if you can, if you know how to share, just press the share button so that your friends and family can also be part of what is going on with us this morning. We've got such great things coming up here and we want to just help you to engage in our service this morning. So we've got Anna uh, leading worship and so wherever you are, just feel free to kneel on the carpet to stand with your hands out. We've got Graham Allen who's coming in live into the studio uh, in just a few moments to deliver a really inspirational message that we're really looking forward to do that and we've got our kids program and lots of interaction and we've got a live story of hope as yeah. well coming up we're really really excited so what's our theme for today what we're we looking at and focusing on Rachel? well we're looking at the great things about jesus so if you've if you've got anything that you would like to share of of why you believe jesus is so great in your life what he's maybe done in your life um, we're just aware that for people that may not know us or know you, um, who may be looking for the first time, it just gives them something to so they can hold on to and go, actually, I didn't know Jesus was like that. So if God has been done anything in your life um, this week or over the last bit of lockdown or, or even further back, just share that with us. Just say God is good or Jesus is good because. Yes, yeah. It is what? really good. So I love Jesus. You know, yeah. my life has been transformed by a, a living relationship with Jesus. And what I love the most is that Jesus is always there. He never interrupts my conversation, always listens, never judges and, and supports me and has always been effectively my biggest supporter in the whole of life. And I found that love to be so transformational. What about you, Ray? I think just when um, when I might feel nervous or anxious, mm. just to know that he brings that peace, that he carries that peace with him. Um, and, and just I can just sense his love and his peace, which is really great. Fantastic, isn't it? Great. We were just praying earlier, actually, about, and as we were praying, we just got this great sense of the presence of Jesus yeah. in there. And actually, our prayer for you this morning is that you get a sense of the presence of Jesus wherever you are, whatever you're going through, whatever your challenge mm. is, and that would be incredible. Okay, families and kids, what's coming up for those? So um, we've got a little bit of a kids thing coming up soon, but we just wanted to say congratulations to all our students yes. on your um, exam results this week. We're having some really positive mm. feedback coming back from you guys. So well done in everything that you've done. You're brilliant anyway, despite your exam results but we're just really really proud of you we are and we've got so many intelligent people in the church uh, we've got a lot of keeping up and catching up to do yeah. but in the meantime kids this is for you and here you can log on to our online service especially for children It's great to see you. Um, you can join us during the service at 11 o'clock. We'll be posting our video online. This morning, Amanda is showing us the story of Esther, so make sure you check it out and hope you enjoy doing the crafts as well. So one of the great freedoms we have by doing an online church service is wherever you are, you could be absolutely free in your expression to Jesus. And I want to help focus your worship of him as we come and, and sing some songs together wherever we are. If you have your Bibles, just open them up and turn to the book of Hebrews, uh, chapter 12. And I'm just going to read verses 1 and 2 as a point of focus for you. Since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross 
disregarding his shame. And now he is seated in the place of honour besides God's throne. Worship is when we take our eyes off ourselves and our situations and we place our eyes on Jesus. When you see Jesus for the first time a thousand times, you're never, ever disappointed. So let's spend a few moments focusing on Jesus right now. Good morning, church. Let's lift our eyes to the King of Kings, the Lord of all, whose power we can't even fathom. Let's just begin to focus our eyes on Him. We worship you, Lord. dark tried to hide you and steal you away death tried to keep you inside of the grave the enemy fought you he tried but he lost you cannot be cried for freedom, you tore down the walls, the weight of our burdens, you carried it all, our fears and our failures.
in all my days I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head oh I will sing of the goodness of God and all my you have been faithful and all my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able oh I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice you have led me through the fire and in darkest night you are close like no other i've known you as a father i've known you as a friend and i have lived in the goodness of god All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God Your goodness is running after, is running after me Your goodness is running it's running after me when my life laid down i'm surrendered now i give you everything your goodness is running after it's running after me your goodness is running your goodness is running after it's running after me your goodness is running after it's running after It's running after me. All my life you have been faithful. We remember it today. All my life you have been faithful. Yes, you have in every moment. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Hey. And all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good with every breath. of the goodness of God Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God And so God, we do just thank you that you mm. are so faithful You are And you are so good mm. God, we've got so much to be thankful for mm. We're thankful for, for Almighty God that would love to love us and choose us we thank you for jesus who died on the cross for us mm. we thank you that father god you left the holy spirit to be with us to empower us and strengthen us god you are so so good and we just pray as we continue this morning that your hand will be upon each and every person watching that father god each and every home will know your goodness mm. that father god each and every home will know that you are with them that you are a faithful god and so we thank you this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Wow. So thank you, Anna, for leading us 
That was so beautifully Beautiful. in worship. If you had a revelation of Jesus and there's something that you want to share on the live text feed, then yeah. feel free to do that on the comments as well. We're going to spend a few moments now just talking through some of the things that's happening over the next few days and weeks in the life of the church. Um, we are coming up to the end of August, which means it's the last opportunity to eat out, to help out. What a great ministry that is in the life of the UK <laughs> at the moment, that you can actually take somebody out uh, for half price if on a Monday to, to Wednesday, if you can book in. Yeah. If you're going in the evening, you do need to book during the day. It's a little bit easier, but it's an opportunity to be really great pastorally, to reach out to somebody and take them out for a nice lunch yeah. and just say, how are you doing? I think the Church of Jesus Christ is very much community and a family and we should be doing that quite naturally as well we just get 50 percent off during this period as well now coming up this week we are opening the doors of the church and we're really excited for our first service in the church yeah. in a long time and that's on tuesday night at half past seven we're doing a prayer and communion service as we rededicate this building back to God together. Uh, it will be uh, COVID safe uh, and so normal rules apply as and we will guide you through that as you arrive. Now please, for those of you who are already on our church database on church where you've been sent an invitation, can you go on and just click yes if you intend to come and then we'll be able to put the seating plan out and the arrangement. If you haven't got access to church suite and you would like to let us know you come in, please put your name on the comments below and we'll add you to the list as we're prepping. We've really got a good number coming and so we're working out which room we're able to do that just spatial, but we will let you know when you arrive on the building. So it's really, really exciting. That's at 7.30 this Tuesday. That's true. Now we've also got connect groups continuing to run. Mm. Um, probably not this Tuesday if you're going to be here because you can't be in two places at the same time. Um, but do speak to your connect group leaders because you are still mm. able to use the church to meet together yes. at a social distance um, space to worship and be together yeah. so um, you know just make sure that you're taking part in that it's a great time just to, we've all missed each other and actually we're not supposed to really be in each other's houses or anything like that but we can meet together in the church yes. and so that that's a really great thing so do contact your connect group leaders if you're not part of connect group and you are local and you would like to be please just message us and we will try and sort a group a group out for you to join great fantastic and next uh, Sunday. Uh, we're starting to get ready. So on September the 6th, which is two weeks from today, we'll be actually opening a live uh, service coming on and we're just getting all the plans out. So uh, watch our news feeds this week because we've got videos coming out explaining how that is going to work. But September the 6th at half past 10, we will be live in the church. And for those of you who are still concerned about whether you're able to travel or come or not, don't worry. We will be offering an online service at the same time. So September September the 6th, we are coming back 10.30 a.m. I say we're coming back on the basis that everybody's really keeping safe and extra remains safe. Yeah. If the government changes it, we'll let you know as soon as that does. But for now, we're heading for September the 6th at 10.30. Really looking forward to this. We are. Yeah, no, it's going to be super cool to see you all. Yes, um, we will. But next week, you will notice a slight difference mm. because we are moving studios. Mm. So we're moving studios upstairs so that we can continue with the live streaming yes. during the, the um, services when we're open to the, to the public. So um, we're going to move and we're going to trial it out next week because it's a bit of um, trial and error for us we're all learning as we go along um, so um, that should be you need to look out for the differences try and work out which room it is and why it looks so different so that's something to look um, forward to next week gonna have a live band as well we will have a live next band week next week on the, the main stage as well so changes happening as we're getting ready for that really really excited to do that yeah Cool. Fab. Now, we today have a live story of help. Now, we normally recorded these, but we've got one in the studio. So we're just going to do a quick switch around. Joe, come and join us. Joe, Morning, church. Morning. Welcome back. I'm back. You it's are. great. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you for having so me. So we thought we'd do a story of help live in the studio because obviously you kind of said farewell, ended your pace yeah. here, and you're here. So I'm what's back. going on and what's your story of hope? So my story of hope is just how amazing God has been during this time in terms of getting me a job. Um, which I have. So, and breaking news, I've got a new job um, working in a local school, one-on-one um, -on -one supporting a young person with disabilities. And it's just a really, wow. really exciting opportunity Great. for me um, in terms of my personal growth and mm. where I see my future. Um, I've always wanted to do something like this. Yeah. Um, but it's just really encouraging to see God in that, even when I wasn't sure when the next job was going to come, whether I'd be able to start an Exeter in September. Um, but it's really exciting to see, oh, this is all sort of very carefully pieced itself together. Um, 
very quickly I managed to find a great place to stay with a lovely family wow. um, from the church. Um, and it's just been really amazing just to see God move within all of that when I've some t sometimes in the middle of it gone, okay, God, what's going on? Wh where am I going? Um, am I going to be in Exeter next year? Am I going to be back home in Nottingham? But now I'm here, now I'm back. And you know what? It's really exciting just to see um, what's going on. I start my new job on the 1st of September. Wow. So next week, um, which is really exciting. Mm. So um, it's all going to be really, really fun stuff, which means many more new Riverside News jokes. Wow. We thought we'd lost you for good on that. I mean, we've had so many people writing in going, what's going to happen with Riverside I know, News? I know, I know. High so. demand, but you know, I'm going to be back. Um, and the jokes... I can't I promise they they're, gonna, they're not going to get better. <laughs> I'm sorry. We've had a few months off, but I can't promise they're going to be any better than what we what we previously had. Uh, but we've got a long list of jokes we need to go through now, which is great. That's great. So if you feel that you can offer um, Joe the benefit of your humour and you've got great jokes, I'm sure you contact can just send me. in. Contact yes. them. Send them yes. in. Uh, we can't guarantee they get aired on live, but you know if they do, well you'll have hit the standard. Yes, that exactly. We've got, so you the very low standard. standard. <laughs> it's a really great story of hype. You. you know, I really want to just kind of mark within you we've known you're a great carer we've often seen that in, in how you've looked after nathan now you're doing this professionally in the school so yeah. and we'd love to see god's blessing thank and you. looking of you so Amen. welcome back to the family thank you you know Ooh. really looking forward to a great story of hope now we are going to go into time of worship again and this is literally a place so that you can get ready to actually say god what are you going to speak to me because this will layer um the word of god as graham comes up and shares a really inspirational message but the, the question is you start to worship is god i'm open for you to speak to me because God's words are life changing you know and they're life affirming and they're going to bring direction during the season of your life so as we worship now let's just prepare our hearts for God thank you Anna oh Lord my God when I in awesome Consider all the works I hand have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior. shall come when Christ shall come with shout of acclamation 
salvation and take me home. What joy shall fill my heart? Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim, my God, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul. We are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. Let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. Let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition, so you will not grow weary and lose heart. Well, good morning, Riverside. It's uh, great to be with you this morning. Before I start, I just want to, it's uh, amazing that we've been doing about 22 or 23 services uh, from this studio and just want to take this opportunity on your behalf maybe to say thank you uh, to the team who have produced this service. So thank you to Aaron and Rachel and Josh and Beth and uh, Chloe uh, who have done the presenting, to Levy and to Emmerich and to the, all those who've been doing the worship leading and providing stories of hope. So um, from your own home, maybe you could just do a quick uh, cheer uh, and clap and or send a message of thanks it's been a brilliant job uh, thank you everybody okay that's enough of that um, so we are moving on to uh, our third in the series of restart and this morning we're going to be looking at the words recenter and recalibrate because last week uh, Rachel gave us this brilliant message of challenging us not to underestimate God to reevaluate his identity and to make sure we appreciate just how powerful majestic and awesome he is and this week I want us to remind ourselves that we can centre our understanding of God a little bit on who Jesus is and what Jesus has done. Uh, those of you who know me will know that I'm not great with mobile technology. And the other week I had to give in to pressure and use Google Maps. Uh, there are other services available, but I had to use Google Maps to try and get myself from one place to another. 
And before I set off, I like to try and imagine the route, the journey that I'm going. So I had the, I had my phone and I had my map and I was scrolling through the map to find out where I was going. And it wasn't long before I suddenly realised I was hopelessly disorientated. I had absolutely no idea where I actually was in relation to the map that was showing on the screen. And I saw a very helpful little button at the bottom there, which said recenter. And so I thought, well, I'll press that and see what happens. So I pressed the button and before my eyes, the map moved, it scrolled, it moved downwards, it rotated, it completely changed. And before long, there was a blue dot in the center of the screen that told me exactly where I was. Now, I know you all have known that for, for years, but it was a revelation to me. And it just reminded me as we come to this theme of recentering, that the key question for human beings is, who am I? Where am I? Where do I fit? What's my location? What is my identity? Am I known? And today is this opportunity to recenter ourselves around the answer to that question, because for Christians, we are located in Christ. It's an expression you will hear uh, uh, very frequently. We are in Christ. And what it means is that Jesus Christ is the source of our identity, he's the source of our value, he's the source of our worth, he's the source of our purpose. We don't find our identity fully in anything else. We don't find it in our family, we don't find it in our work, we don't find it in our achievements or our successes, we don't find it in our sexuality, we don't find it in our hobbies, we don't find it in our hopes or our failures or our ministries, we find our hope, identity and worth in the person of Jesus Christ. Uh, Paul says in Ephesians uh, 1 verse 5, some fantastic words, God decided in advance to adopt us into his family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. Jesus allows us to have that relationship with God as father. And in Ephesians 2 verse 10, God, uh, Paul describes us as God's masterpiece, his poem, he has created us anew in Christ Jesus to do the things he has planned for us long ago. So a relationship with Jesus makes us new. Uh, our identity in Christ means we've agreed to follow Jesus. It means that we accept the forgiveness that Jesus offered to people on the cross as he died. It means that we acknowledge that he has risen from the dead and is now alive in heaven. And it means that we uh, agree that he will be our master and our friend. It gives us a completely new identity as a child of God. And this is a great season to be recentering to if you're a Christian today, to reaffirm that with joy in your heart and celebrate the fact that Jesus is the centre of our lives. I want to read some verses over you, and you may want to just hold your hands out. You may want to close your eyes, just as a reaffirmation of how unshakable your location is in Jesus. Let me read these words from Romans 8, verses 38 and 39. Paul says, I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons, neither at nor fear our fears for today, nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus. It's a fantastic position to be in, to recenter ourselves on that love that Jesus has for us, that love that God has shown to us through Jesus. It's not what we have done, it's not what we do, it's what Christ has done. But as I was uh, looking at my map, I noticed that the blue dot that told me exactly where I was had a, another paler circle around it. And that apparently tells me that the GPS isn't entirely sure where I am. And sometimes the, that blue circle can be a bit larger if it's not entirely sure where you are. 
And I think for some people, maybe you're listening to this today, you, you, you wouldn't necessarily identify yourself as a Christian. You might not put yourself in that central place or Jesus at the centre, but you may be somewhere close. You may be moving towards Jesus. And the story of the Bible is full of stories of people who are in a similar situation. I think of this man called Zacchaeus in uh, Luke chapter 19. He was a, an outsider. He, he wasn't particularly liked by the people around him. I'm not saying that's you, uh, but, there are, he, he was, but he was curious about Jesus. And so he climbed a tree to try and see Jesus. And Jesus spotted him and invited himself to tea. And they spent time chatting together and Zacchaeus got to know who Jesus was. And at the end of that encounter in verse nine, Jesus says to Zacchaeus, salvation has come to this house today. There's that sense of Zacchaeus moving closer and closer towards that location, that central point of knowing Jesus. And if that's you today, can I just encourage you to keep taking those steps, to keep asking those questions, to keep praying that prayer to, for God to reveal himself to you. And the third thing that I spotted about my Google Maps was that none of this would have happened if there was, there was a button that I had to press first. There was a button, a message that came up on my phone that basically said, do you want to be found? Do you want the phone to know where you are? And I needed to give permission for that to happen. And God isn't going to force himself upon us. He's not going to um, insist on a relationship with you unless we can say, yes, I want to be found. I want to be known by Jesus. J.I. Packer uh, said this, he says, the fact is that he knows me. I am graven on the palm of his hands. I am never out of his mind. All my knowledge of him depends on his sustained initiative in knowing me. I know him because he first knew me and continues to know me. He knows me as a friend, one who loves me, and there is no moment when his eyes are off me uh, or his attention is distracted from me. No moment, therefore, when his care falters. I can encourage you this morning to allow yourself to be known by the God who created you and to centre your life on the person and the acts and the words of Jesus. Mm. Now, as I was sitting um, in my car ready to drive off to that, having got the map sorted out, the phone then asked me to do another thing. It asked me to recalibrate it. And it was a very strange experience sitting in the car, waving this phone in a strange figure of eight um, shape to try and get the phone to recalibrate. And it took me back to a, a time in school when I was teaching um, with the new interactive whiteboards that we had. And, and it, again, technology and I didn't really get on because what happened was this, this new technology, I had this special pen that I had to write on the board and it was connected up to the computer. And when I would write on the board, it was supposed to appear. But two things happened. The first thing, when I wrote on the board, the, uh, the writing took two or three seconds to appear. And when you're trying to write, that's quite a long time. And the second thing that happened was when it did appear, it appeared about two or three inches higher than where I thought I had written it. So the end result was that my sentences looked like a three-year-old had written them. They were illegible and the students I was teaching thought it was hilarious. So I needed to get the IT team in to help me out and they said, well, Graham, what you need to do is you need to recalibrate the board. I said, how do you do that? They said, well, here's a button, you press this button and then five dots appeared on the screen. And I, what I had to do with the pen was I had to press the buttons and there were four in the corners and one in the center. So I would press those buttons. And then once I'd done that, the board recalibrated and my writing was fine. Even sometimes when we have Jesus at the center, we can, we can deviate, we can be out of sync, we can, uh, we can go off tangent and our lives and our thoughts and our actions can sometimes not be quite how we would want them to be or how God would want them to be. We need to correct those discrepancies. We need to get ourselves back in sync. Uh, let me give you an example of the kind of thing that I've been thinking about recently. Sometimes what we say or think about ourselves is at odds with what, how Jesus speaks. We may find ourselves saying things like this, I'm so angry, I could never forgive them. I'm at sea, I'm lost, I'm a failure, I'm a loser. I'm fine doing things my own way. I'm in charge of my own life. And when we say things like that, we need to sometimes match that up with the kind of things that Jesus said, because our I am statements are very different from Jesus's mm. I am statements. Mm. 
Jesus said in John, uh, throughout John, I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the gate for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth and the life. I am the true vine. Sometimes we need to match up our, our I am statements with the Jesus I am statements. Jesus' statements about himself were words of sustenance. They were words of illumination, words of mediation and inclusion. They were words of affirmation, leadership and flourishing. When Jesus talked about himself as the true vine, he said, those who remain in me and I in them will produce good fruit. Now that's at odds with statements like, I'm a loser. I'm a failure. I won't amount to anything. And if Jesus is the centre of our lives, we need to recalibrate around the words of Jesus. And so I'd like to finish just by giving you five touch points, if you like, if you think about my interactive whiteboard, five, intera five touch points of truth, five touch points, five things we can do on a regular basis just to make sure that we recalibrate, to make sure that Jesus is at the centre of our daily lives. Number one, use scripture. Uh, 2 Timothy verse three, uh, chapter 3, verse 16, reminds us that scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realise what is wrong in our lives. We can use scripture, we can read scripture on a regular basis. Many of you may have been following the Read Scripture app over the last few months and it's really exciting, isn't it? Because we're just about to go into the New Testament. So even if you got lost in the cubits of the tabernacle, um, don't worry rejoin the app start with Matthew and read through the the Gospels and the New Testament through to the end of the year find a regular point where you can where you can do that uh, read the words of Jesus a time and time again allow them to um, to go deep into your soul so that you can recalibrate around the words of scripture number two the Holy Spirit invite the Holy Spirit to help you recalibrate John 14, verse 26, Jesus reminds us that the Holy Spirit will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I have told you. So as we read scripture, we ask the Holy Spirit, help us, help me, remind me of what Jesus said. Remind me of the words of God. Remind me of how I can apply this to my life. Show me where I'm not, not matching up, where I'm doing things wrong. Mm -hmm. Number three is prayer. God's given us the gift of prayer to be able to recalibrate. Psalm 139 verse 23, David knows this so well. Search me, O God, know my heart, test me and know my anxious thoughts. That invitation to God to come quietly before him, to come still before him and say, search my heart, help me recalibrate, show me where things aren't quite right. Number four, he's given us each other. Uh, he's given the church as a, as a gift to help us recalibrate. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 11 says, so encourage each other mm. and build each other up. Let's carry on doing that. We've been brilliant at doing it during lockdown. Let's continue to do that, to encourage each other, to meet with each other, to pray for one another, to forgive one another, to receive forgiveness from one another as we make sure we keep short accounts and that we are the body of Christ. And then number five in the centre, I guess, is forgiveness. Uh, because it's not a question of if I need recalibrating, it's a question of when. Uh, I'm always going to need to recalibrate. I'm going to need to remind myself of those verses in 1 John 1 verse 9. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. I know that every day I need to recalibrate. I, need, I know there will be things I've said and done, things I've not said and not done, that I need to come back to God and say I'm sorry. You may be listening to this, I may be talking to you and you may be thinking you've done the worst possible thing that means that recalibration is, is impossible. You're so far off the centre, there is no chance. But there is always a chance. There is always the certain hope of forgiveness in Christ Jesus. And you may need to come to him this morning and put your hands out in surrender and say, I'm sorry, but 
I want to recalibrate, I want to recenter, I want to start again, as Aaron spoke about uh, two or three weeks ago. I want to reset, I want to reboot. I want to finish with a, um, a, 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 rem, a reminisce of a, of a speech or a, a talk that I heard R.T. Kendall give many, many years ago. And there was something he said that really struck me. He was talking about Marx's spiritual maturity and how you know whether you're getting more and more spiritually mature. And he said something like this. He said that he'd come to come to the view that, that the, the mark of spiritual maturity was the amount of time it took between doing something wrong, getting out of sync, deviating, and realizing that you'd done it, and then doing something about it. And he said as a, as a young man, he would go maybe weeks or months or years between doing something wrong and realizing and turning away from that. And he says his prayer is that that time scale will get shorter and shorter and shorter. So there's that sensitivity to the Holy Spirit, that sensitivity to knowing Jesus, that knowing what Scripture says, being in accountable relationships, coming to God in prayer, receiving forgiveness, that that time scale is reduced. Mm -hmm. So the moment you step out of sync, you can say, Lord, I want to recalibrate. I want to be back in sync with you. Help me recenter myself. Help me recalibrate myself. I'm going to pray uh, uh, for us, if that's OK. You may want to close your eyes. You may want to stand. You may want to kneel. You may want to put your hands out in front of you as a way of surrender. But let's pray together. And then Anna will lead us in worship. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you that you are a loving, gracious Father that you've created your world, you've created us in your image, and it was good. And yet sometimes we, or uh, well, often we deviate from that. We go off track and we fail to put you at the center. We fail to acknowledge Jesus as the Lord of our lives. And we try to do things in our own way. And if there's anyone listening to this this morning who can identify with that and who wants to say yes I have I've wandered far away but I want to recenter yeah. now is a great opportunity father for for that person to return if that's you all you need to do in your heart or aloud is just say heavenly father I'm sorry I want to recenter my life on Jesus Christ as the embodiment of the love of God, the forgiveness for everything I've done wrong and my hope for future life eternal. And I want to pray for anyone who, who feels that need to recalibrate this morning. Maybe you have had Jesus at the centre of your life, but you need and you feel that need to, to recalibrate. Father, would you forgive anything that is hindering us from returning to you? Would you help us engage with scripture? Help us be open to the working of the Holy Spirit. Help us come to you in prayer. Help us share our needs with others. And help us receive your forgiveness. Thank you, in Jesus' name. Amen. Who has won our victory? Who was slain for? to see who has risen victoriously the father's perfect son is he who has broken every chain who brings healing at his name? Who has conquered death and grave? Jesus.
Jesus Christ, you overcame. Christ has won. Yes, Christ has won. Christ has won. He is risen. Yes, Christ has won. Christ has won. He is risen. Who has seen the worst of me? Who forgives eternally? Who gives love abundantly? Jesus Christ who ransomed me. Yeah, who has healed my broken heart? Who has held me in his arms? Who shines brighter than the stars? Great I am, how great you are. Christ is one. Oh, yes. Christ has won. Christ has won. He is risen. Yes. Christ has won. Christ has won. He is risen. Who is moving in this place? Covers us with love and grace. Wonderful in all his ways. Son of God, receive our praise. We just lift our voices to you, Lord. We just thank you for your sacrifice at the cross for your victory over darkness. You rose again and brought us into your life, Jesus. And we'll never be the same. And we can't thank you enough. So we just lift our songs individually to you, whatever that may look like. Just begin to sing out in your homes right now. Thank you, Lord. Christ has won. darkness and you nailed it to a cross over the grave you stand victorious my God how great you are you are a lion you are a lion roaring over us you crush the darkness in me to a cross over the grave you stand victorious my God how great you are one more time you are a lion you are a lion roaring over us you crush the darkness in me nailed it to a cross over the grave you stand victorious my god how great you are yes christ has won christ has won he is risen yes christ has Christ has a 
Christ has won. He is risen. Yes, Christ has won. Christ has won. He is risen. Such an incredible, powerful song. Mm. Uh, written by one of our very own John Fison, so powerful and just let those words resonate in your spirit right now we're going to declare a prayer together over your house your family whatever it is you're going through right now we are recentering around the authority and the lordship of Jesus Christ in your home and in your life so close your eyes put your hand out before him as an act of submission and say heavenly father dear lord Jesus Christ we declare your sovereignty that you have won at the cross when you died and you rose again you broke every curse of sin every sickness over our body, every addiction, every habit. Mm. There is freedom in your name, the name of Jesus. That at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. We take the knee today. We kneel before your glorious name. Would you fill our hearts, our lives, our families, our houses, our communities, our workplaces, our cities, our regions, our country right now. Fill the earth with the glory mm. of the Lord right now. Yeah. As we recenter and we recalibrate our lives around the Son of God, Jesus. Jesus Christ, we acknowledge you. And we pray that you would build us as a people of God mm. who are centered around the Savior of the world as mm. we worship you, not just today, but every day. Lord, as we walk into the future together, may your name be known all over the world. Jesus. We ask in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Fantastic. Amen. Well, that's the end of our program today. We've we've just loved being with you. We just hope that you've sensed the Holy Spirit mm. and the power of God mm. um, through everything that's been done. That's such a powerful song. Yeah. Um, go back and play it back yes. over if you yeah. feel you need to. That's that would be a really great it thing is. to do. We look forward to seeing you guys. We some do. of you on Tuesday for our prayer and communion. Um, do try and get here a bit early because we do have to check you in and do your temperature and things like that. Um, but we're really, really looking forward to spending that time we are. together. But for the for us, it's a goodbye for goodbye. now. God bless. Take care. Have a great week. Bye.